So recently we got these cool new build plates which have a texture on the bottom and they impart a cool texture on the base of your print. And these are awesome, don't get me wrong, but they are kind of limited in the fact that they can only do this on the base of your print. It's a little more difficult trying to put a texture on the side of your print. In slicers, we have fuzzy skin, but that's kind of all we have. We're all familiar with fuzzy skin mode. It's a great way to give your part an organic look, to increase its grip or to just texture fur. But we don't really have any control over the fuzzy skin, just how fuzzy it actually is. Which is why I tend to use a different approach when applying textures to my models. And one which allows me to use basically any kind of texture. Here we have a couple of examples. One is a vase, which we added a wood texture to. And the other one is uh, our head crab costume that we did last Halloween. This has a kind of blotchy leathery texture. And both surfaces were perfectly smooth when we modeled it, but then we added the texture and it really makes it pop. It also makes painting a lot easier as it works wonders with dry brushing. Today though, we'll be working with a leather texture to create two tote bags. And these will serve as prototypes and we'll do some crazy complicated designs in the future. But right now we're just gonna focus on texture. Actually, I tried looking online and I, I couldn't really find anything on Thingiverse or printables. It's kind of surprising. Actually, I didn't think that, that would happen. I thought there'd be quite a few. Maybe I should design a new wallet as well while I'm at it. I've had this thing since university and it's, it's seen better days. This thing looks like a Smurf died violently on it. Oof. It looks like an FEP film spent the night in a plastic recycling plant and now has PTSD. Looks like post-consumer PET, but without the 40% virgin polymer added. I'm not generally a sentimental person, but if it works, I keep it. It has to be like a level five screw up. This is, this is more like a level four. Wouldn't you like some coupons from 2017? Oh my God, I have my wife's blood donor card. No reason for that. You can't prove anything. Okay, wallet another time. Let's just focus on the bags. Fashion. So we want a subtle leather look. Nothing fancy, very minimalist, not too big, not too small, just something to use when you're on the go. I want this to be quite rugged and a bit flexible, so we're obviously going to use TPU for this. It's going to be a little bit stretchy because of that. And to get the actual texture, we're going to be using Blender. Now, you can use other programs other than Blender. You can use ZBrush. Uh, you can't really do this that well with something like FreeCAD or... Fusion 360. Uh, I'm choosing Blender because it's very versatile. You can do something very, very organic looking, or you can do something for product design. And that's basically why I like Blender. Fashion. Okay, here we are in Blender. And the first thing that we're going to do is to create a cube and scale it to the proportions that we want. I'm not going to be very detailed here. This exercise is just to create a texture on a shape. Next, we can subdivide each face so that the whole shape is divided into a grid pattern that is relatively dense. Now, the reason we're doing this is because the texture is going to be pasted on these grids. And the smaller the grids are, the more detailed they will be. So we need to make this shape have lots and lots of faces so that we can get a good resolution and depth to the texture. So we got to make sure here that the grid pattern is quite uniform, meaning that all of the little cubes, the little squares we're making are going to be around the same size. This is important because the texture is going to be pasted on this grid. And if one grid is bigger than the other one, then it will be sort of stretched out. And if one is smaller than another, then it'll be kind of compressed. So there will be some distortion if the grid pattern is not uniform. Okay, after doing that, we can just copy what we have. And we'll come back to that later. And now we can go back into edit mode and select the whole grid pattern. Uh, press U to go to the unwrap menu and unwrap this. Now the unwrap tool is essentially turning the 3D grid pattern into a 2D grid pattern so that the 2D texture file can be pasted onto it. And next thing that we're going to do is go to our modifiers and create a subdivision surface. Now we've already done some subdivisions to this but adding uh, the subdivision surface modifier will give us some more control when we are putting that texture on. You can also add a displace modifier and we'll come back to that one. Next thing we can do is go to Google image search and type in leather texture and seamless. Now, the reason we're typing in seamless as a keyword here is because we want a seamless texture, meaning that the edges of each texture will be able to blend together. Okay, next thing we do is we go to our textures tab and we open the texture that we have found. 
Then we can go back to our modifiers tab and in our displace modifier, we can select the texture that we have loaded up. We also want to change the coordinates to UV, this being the unwrap that we made earlier and the UV map to UV map. This way that texture can be pasted across this 2D representation of a 3D shape. And we can change the strength of it to 200, 300, 400. It depends on how strong you want that texture to be. Now at first it's gonna look very, very low res, but we can go to our subdivision surface modifier and increase the levels viewport so that it is a lot sharper. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment with the textures that you have. Some might not be suited for your model, so you can download a few and try them out, see which one works best. You can also go down to the textures tab and go down to mapping and change the X, Y repeat value. Now this is quite useful if your grid pattern was not uniform to begin with, meaning that the grids might be more rectangular than square. If this happens, then your texture will be stretched out on that axis so you can change the X and Y repeat values to make them a little more compressed and balance them out so that they are much more uniform and the texture does not appear stretched out. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now we can accept the subdivision surface modifier and the displace modifier so that everything is set. And we can also create another cube and scale it out, bring it to the top of the shape and use a Boolean modifier to actually cut off the top because the top is also very, very well textured and we don't really want that. We want a flat top and you can do the same with the bottom as well so that when you're printing it, it's a nice flat bottom. Okay, next thing we do is bring that shape that we created earlier and scale it just so it's a little bit smaller than the shape that we have and use the Boolean modifier again to basically carve out the shape so that we have an actual bag. There are other ways to do this. You don't have to do it my way. Another option would be a solidify modifier. However, I like doing it this way because all of the inside walls will be perfectly smooth now. Now there is one last thing to do. This is a very detailed shape. We use the high resolution texture and a lot of subdivisions. So if we go to our statistics, we can see that there are a lot of triangles in the shape. Unnecessarily so, we don't need that level of detail. And we can also reduce the file size. In order to do this, we use a decimate modifier and we can set that value to 0.5, which will delete half of the triangles and make this a lot smaller and easier to manage. Because if you try to load this up into a slicer, it might be very, very slow fashion. Okay, so our parts are printed and painted. Ugh. All right, I like to call this one classic grandma and this one sexy cougar. So I wanted this to be very leathery look. So this one I painted completely black and with a glossy lacquer over it as well. And this one's kind of a reddish brown. Now for the painting, I'm actually using acrylics with these. They work really well with leather. So this is why I chose it. And yeah, you can really see the leather texture on those. It's really good. I actually considered studying fashion design when I was younger. It's a good thing I chose English and philosophy. It's super useful here in Austria working with 3D printers. So which is your favorite? Classic granny or sexy cougar? I like classic granny. It's a very classic granny. Um, I don't know, being all black, it's kind of maybe a bit blocky, but sexy cougar is, sexy cougar is a sexy cougar. It's nice. This thing would work as a fine man bag. Oh yeah, I'm ready for the town. Maybe I'm not the best person to model this. Fashion. Recently, slicers are incorporating a lot more basic CAD features, and I would really love to see something like this added. So guys at Prusa, Cura, Bamboo, Orca Slicer, you know what I want. Fitting all of that texture in a small object tends to make it look like fuzzy skin. You can't really see any of the detail. So if you're doing this with a small object, you might need to find a lower res texture. Just keep that in mind. And remember that that texture is wrapped around a grid pattern. So all of those grids have to be the same size or there will be distortion. 
If some grids are smaller than the others, then the texture will be compressed. And if they're bigger, it will be stretched out. What about you guys? Would you be interested in using textures in your designs? For me, I really want to do this again, but with a really detailed bag and something that you wouldn't think was 3D printed, even if you're familiar with 3D printing. Thanks for tuning in and checking out our video, guys. If you have any questions about textures, then you can write us in the comments below or send us an email or join us on our Discord server. The link is down below and we'll see you guys next time. Later. Thank <laughs> you.